guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is called Card Weaver by Oh Damn Publishing. This game plays in the same world as their previous game and RPG, the Shared Dream, the board game, and Of Dreams and Magic, the RPG system. This one brings you the Animus characters where you'll be playing these dream warriors against a nightmare character from those other games into a deck builder where you'll be playing either one versus many, cooperative, or even solo players. Play. So you can play up to three players as the good guys and one player as the nightmare or good guys and a nightmare that plays as the computer or you can play one character versus the nightmare as the computer. So a lot of flexibility. Regardless though, you're going to have your own deck for each character regardless of whether you're the nightmare or a dream warrior and you're going to shuffle up a shop that has your own unique shop as well and you'll be drawing cards just like a normal deck builder, placing them down, gathering cards specifically from your shop and attempting to defeat the nightmare. And the nightmare is going to be doing the same thing trying to remove all of you from the game however when you die you'll still get to actually turn over and use your anima state so you'll be able to use characters even after they passed on so there's no elimination in the game as well as if the game ends by somebody discarding or drawing their entire cards or their shop or whatever then you're going to tally up points and whoever has the most points in the deck is going to win with some variations on how points works for the nightmare regardless well, that's the basic idea for the game card weaver let's go ahead and take it down below i'll show you what you get in the game i'll explain how to play a little bit and then we'll tell you what i think about the game this is everything you get in the game card weaver and as you can see there's quite a bit to this game each player depending on the number of players, will choose either to play as one of these guys here, one of the Animuses, or they can choose to play as the Nightmare. Now you can play up to four players in the game, and you can choose to have all four players be Animuses against a neutral, basically AI Nightmare, or you could have three players play up against a nightmare that plays as a human, as one of your friends, basically. So, after after you have everything here all laid out, everybody is going to choose. So, for instance, if we're playing a three-player game, perhaps you'll have somebody be the cyber cop. He'll take this specific uh, set of cards here. Uh, he will also take one of these starting decks. He's also going to take his animus card here, which he'll place down next to him. And the cyber cop will take one of these life counters. And oh, we'll go ahead and set it to the correct life amount these are all prototypes so bear with me a little bit here and you get 30 health place it there and that's all that is needed for that specific character and everybody else would do the same thing here so the songstress would take their deck their starting set of five, uh, 10 cards as well as their animus and one of their little tokens here uh, these tokens over here are damage tokens that will be placed on basically minions that come out and then these are level up counters which will basically be placed on your animus or will be placed on the nightmares here or nemesises where you can go ahead and basically level up your character and do specific abilities throughout the game. Over here on this side these are going to be the two different choices for the Nightmare character. The, I keep saying Nightmare, but it's actually the Nemesis character. You can play as a Blood Drinker, or you can play as an Undead Warlord. And these are the two different decks. If you want to play with the Blood Drinker, you'll simply take the Nemesis card for Blood Drinker. You will also take the Blood Drinker deck, and you will take this Nemesis deck, and you will put them together, and you will shuffle them up. Depending on the difficulty of the game, you will take out certain cards or you will not take out certain cards. Additionally, the Nemesis character will also get their own unique deck of card, their own deck of cards specifically to them, which everyone else gets a set of as well. And then you've got pretty much the setup for the game. You'll shuffle all of the cards for each of the players' decks and deal out five cards to form a shop for them. You'll deal out, or you'll shuffle their main deck, which will consist of the ten cards, and you'll deal out five cards to your hand. And then play is going to go around clockwise. The rest of all this, these cards will be set aside, except for the Dream Catcher cards and the uh, Adept Ability cards, which you can purchase as passive cards that anybody can pick up, provided they can afford them. And also, the Blood Drinker or the Undead Warlord's HP will be based on the number of characters he will be fighting. So it will be if he has, let's say you're playing as the Undead Warlord, it's got 30 HP. If you're playing against three characters, that XP is going to be increased monumentally. I think it's actually times the number of players. So if you're playing against three, it'll be 90 HP. But that's pretty much the stuff for the game. We'll actually go ahead and take it fully down below now. I will set it up for a three-player game to show you what it looks like and show you how the shops function. I'll show you how turns go and what the cards do. And then we'll come up and I will discuss the game and whether or not I think you should pick it up for yourself on Kickstarter.
So here's the setup for a three-player game of Card Weaver by Odam Publishing. And as you can see, there's a bit to explain here. It's actually not as complex as it may appear though, because each player has their own separate areas here. Only thing you need to know about the middle of the board here is that you have the dream catchers and the adaptability cards. These you can only purchase once per turn, but they're accessible to everyone. They even have a universal symbol at the very, uh, the universal uh, text in the bottom left hand corner which lets you know that anybody can pick them up you have your hp tokens which will be useful when you do damage to players minions and whatnot and then you have your level up tokens which will be placed on your animuses as well as on your nemesis whenever you gain level up tokens we set the bad guys hp to two times its base hp based on the fact that there are two players playing against him or her and everybody else's hp is going to be set based on the animuses hp in this case for the cyber Cop, it's 30 and for the pyromancer over here it's 30 as well so they've got their hp set up and after that then you're going to shuffle your decks on the main decks like i told you before about the uh, nightmare here or the nemesis here you're going to be shuffling this deck up here after you put both of them together and then you're going to deal out five cards everybody else is just going to get their own base deck which will also function the same way shuffle them and deal out five cards face up so that people can see now, if you're playing as the nemesis over here, if you get any things like nightmares, if any nightmares come out at the very beginning of the game, you can simply go ahead and put that back into the deck, take out a new card or shuffle and take out a new card and place it there. You're never gonna start with nightmares. Nightmares are only going to pop out when you uh, flip them over from the deck. And when that happens, you'll be putting them into people's discard piles, which will then hurt them when they draw them. So they're like little trap cards that can facilitate the nemesis as they come out. Additionally, players will have the option to mulligan their five cards starting shop area if they would like. And then down at the bottom here, these are your five card hands. You're going to start with 10 cards and everybody will start with the same 10 cards, including the nemesis over here, shuffle them up and then deal out five cards. And this is going to be your starting hand. And as you can see, there is three starting hands here just because I don't have three hands in order to show you. So I'm just simply laying them out face up on the table. And that's pretty much it for the setup. Players are going to go ahead and begin the game and you will be purchasing. So let me go ahead and just show you what all the cards do. For instance, you have this one here this is your conviction artifact it's going to give you devotion i think that's i believe what the stat is called uh, when you are basically buying things let me see if i'm right here conviction yes it's conviction so when you use conviction that's basically your currency throughout the game you'll be able to buy cards in the shop area each player has their own individual one and the cost is on the bottom right hand side of the card that's the cost of it to buy uh, additionally they are going to have these attack cards in your deck as well these you will play and you will attempt to do damage to the other players now players are going to have static attack and defense so you'll need to penetrate those in order to hurt them and additionally players will have the ability to play certain cards as an instance when they're not on their turn such as this card here with a little lightning bolt to be able to block additional attack and this is the next one we're talking about which is the defense cards what's cool about these is they function similar to shards of infinity when you play them if it's not played on on your turn it will stay in play protecting you until the beginning of your turn in which case it gets discarded and then the other cards are going to be the ones you're going to be buying from the shop here so that's the main three you're going to be getting in your deck when you start the game off uh, cards are going to have a cost value at the bottom right they're going to have a point value at the bottom middle and then they're going to have all their specs on the side the left hand side here whether you can only play one of them how long they last how much defense or attack they give you and any passive or active abilities that they provide sometimes you're going to be doing things like direct damage to another player which can ignore defense and other times you can make an attack targeting an animus target uh, uh, sorry you can you may make an attack targeting an animus target you instead so that's a good way of kind of protecting other players and whatnot and each of these characters play differently in fact talking about the characters because this is just a basic deck builder you play five you do what they say you use them to attack you use them to defend yourself and then you buy these things put them in your discard pile so for instance if i have this hand here i have two uh, in order to currency to spend i can buy this put it in my discard pile and then instantly refill 
After that, these are used as well. I can then use these as well. And remember, if you have cards at the end of your turn that you didn't play, they're still going to go to your graveyard, in which case you're then going to draw five new cards. And just like any other deck builder, you'll shuffle up a new set of cards whenever you have to draw a card from your deck and place it out. So it starts like this. If at any point you have to draw a card, you'll shuffle your discard pile up and make a new deck there. And then it will pass to the next player. And it just goes along that way. If an Animus hits a Nemesis, the Animus is going to gain experience. And experience will let you do unique abilities on your turn. As you gain them, some things are going to be quite nice. And of course, as you progress throughout it, throughout the game, you're going to have more and more powerful abilities. The same will be said for the Nemesis character. Obviously, this character has a lot of array of very, very powerful abilities. And the Nemesis character, if I do believe correctly, is just going to gain experience, whereas these guys need to actually do damage to the Nemesis player in order to gain said experience. And that's basically the idea of the game. When one of these decks runs out, then the game will end and players will total the amount of victory points in their deck, in their discard, and in their hand. And the Nemesis player is going to tally up his as well and times that point value by the number of players. And whoever has the most points wins. The other way the game can end is if the players are able to defeat the Nemesis player, bringing it down to zero HP, or if the Nemesis player can bring down the two Animus players to zero HP, they will lose. Another little cool feature of the game too is when a character passes away, you're simply going to turn them over, and they're still going to be able to do something on their turn, which will help the rest of the Animus players even if they have been knocked out of battle. And that's pretty much it for Card Weaver. Uh, there is some, of course, unique things and things I want to talk about up above, but that is the idea of how you play. You go throughout the turns and continue until one of the victory conditions is met. Card Weaver by Odam oh Publishing. So let's go ahead and get into this one with, I suppose, a couple caveats. There are certain cards you buy, which are basically the universal ones like this one here, which says return this card to the Dreamcatcher deck at the end of your turn. So after you play this card, you return it to your deck. This is going to give you bonus currency, but only once after you play it, it goes away. However, there's a lot of combos that facilitate cards like that. Also remember, you're going to have your own unique deck of cards which is your basic starting 10 as well not sorry i keep saying unique deck of 10 and everybody has the same starting deck of 10 cards but you'll have your own unique shop deck of cards that you're going to shuffle and deal out and that deck of cards functions differently than every other deck of cards in the game even as such with the nemesis character as well and with the nemesis character they each have their own unique deck of shop cards as well which you're going to put in with the specific nemesis cards which are like the the, the every single nemesis gets these type of cards your characters and their level up abilities are unique in the fact that each player is trying to do something different or helping their party in some unique way. The Pyromancer, he is simply able to do a lot of draws, he can return cards from the discard pile back to his hand, he can be a sort of a damage dealer as well. And then you have the Cyber Cop, who's good at defending players, is good at gaining attack. You've got the Songstress, which is basically a support character, and she's able to have players draw cards that aren't herself. She can purchase cards in another player's dreamscape for them, and she can target a player to gain a top card of their Animus deck, just simply gain it as opposed to paying for it. And the Hacker as well is used. They're, they each have their own unique level up abilities. They all have their own unique health. Some of them have static attack and defense. Other ones don't. The Vampire, for instance, or the Blood Drinker, you can guess what he does when he does damage. He can heal himself, so cards that do direct damage do one less damage to Vampires. Once a turn, all Animus players may discard a non-starter card, and if they don't, you heal for each person who didn't, so that this is a way of actually gaining health, because technically the Blood Drinker has less health than the Warlord does, but it really kind of equals out when you use that ability quite often. Leveling up is very interesting in this game because you can defeat other players' machinations or monsters or creatures or defenders, and those guys will give rewards to you if you're able to defeat them. Now, obviously, it's a competitive slash cooperative game in the sense that you can play four versus the AI, you can play three on one, you can play uh, one on one. It's really up to you how you want to play this game. You also have that solo option as well, but the game functions very similarly no matter how you choose to play it just depends on if you're actually having the AI function and just kind of it goes off the AI tangent or if it actually goes and a specific player is playing that character regardless though it's a lot of fun uh, that's pretty much the style of the game really if you've played a deck builder like shards of infinity 
you're going to understand how to play this game. It functions very similarly to Shards of Infinity, even with how you play defense cards out of turn. The fact that you have a health total or a health pool and you're dealing with bosses or you're playing that uh, 1v1 kind of thing, it does function very similar, but there's a lot of differences in the fact that you have an Animus that is able to flip over and be used even after they've passed on. The fact that there's a 3v1 or a 2v1 or even playing the whole cooperative 4v1. Um, there's also the fact that the main character, the bad guy, he's going to get a ton of HP. It's going to seem overwhelming at first, but even still, it's very possible that for either side to win. It just really depends on your strategy. And when you first start the playing the game, everyone seems to be on equal footing until you start seeing the ramp start to happen on one side or the other, in which case players have to use very unique strategies in order to overcome that nemesis and his very powerful abilities as the game progresses throughout. I think this is a solid deck builder for those of you who like Shards of Infinity, if you like Dominion, if you like any of these other basic card uh, deck builders, but you want something with a little bit more bite to it, something that involves that 1v many aspect of some games. Like, for instance, I haven't seen any deck builders that do 1v many. This is the first one, and it does it pretty well as, as, as well, other than, of course, the fact that it has that ramp up. And then the fact that you can play cooperative, which Shards of Infinity now has, but this is a new thing for Shards of Infinity. And in this one here, it starts with the base game. Uh, the artwork is solid. I really, really like the artwork for this game. I think that the Shared Dream has some excellent artwork as well. Their, their entire line of, of stuff has great artwork, and this is, is no different. I've enjoyed looking at all the different cards and playing as the different characters with their own unique shop decks all pertain to that specific character, like for instance, this Exangu Exanguinate, it actually shows, it looks like a vampire playing it. Oh, and one last thing too, I almost forgot, this is actually really cool too. So in the deck, like I said before, Nightmares don't actually start in the shop for the players playing as the ne Nemesis. When you buy stuff as the Nemesis, Nightmares will pop out of the deck. And these will do things. This is as you can play this card if it's in, you must play if it's in your hand. At the start of your turn, you'll lose one experience. If you don't have an experience, lose place this card in this card pile of the animus to your left. So players will actually start losing experience with these guys. They come out, they go into uh, a graveyard of the uh, nemesis is choosing and then when that player shuffles his graveyard into his library and draws this card a trap unfolds and there's quite a few of them and they can be pretty nasty and some of them actually will move around to other players which means that you're always having interaction even when the nemesis isn't actually taking his or her turn uh, so that's pretty much it as far as negatives go i guess there's a little bit of a ramp up if you're not into deck builders this is definitely not going to be for you and it does have a little bit of a dark theme there is some like you know vampire overtones or some blood it, it's not too dark maybe i'd say teenagers would be just fine with it and of course it has this like cyber dystopian future style thing going on for it i like it it's a lot of fun if you're interested in picking the game up you can check out down below let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and hit that outro. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game slash card game review. If you're interested in taking a look at the game Card Weaver, go ahead and hit that link in the description down below on Kickstarter. You can pick up this deck building game of sorts, which is also like a very unique individualistic deck building game where you can play 1v many. So it has a lot of different options and opportunities for players who like deck builders. Also check our website unfilteredgamer.com. There's a giveaway up there for you. It's sponsored by the Giveaway Geek. I put something up there regardless so that if you want to enter into a giveaway there you go traffic to my site so thank you giveaway geek thank you guys so much for watching and as always i look forward to delving into of dreams and magic again with you next time booga 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 oh yeah i almost forgot they gave me some uh bonus cards here little uh little blank ones so that i can of course make my own characters so i'm gonna make this one here the unfiltered gamer minion it's got a thousand hp 50 attack and what 30 defense to start the game off with there you go there's my custom made card for you get to making it right now